And now it is just still developing because Turkey's President Erdogan finds himself as kind of a kingmaker in this incident, saying he is ready to reveal the, quote, naked truth tomorrow. Well, let's bring in Hadley, who is in Riyadh for us. And Hadley, we discussed at the top of the show here how many international political leaders, many voices we've been listening to out of Washington, D.C., aren't exactly buying the story we've had from Saudi Arabia so far. So this means the announcement coming from Turkey could be critical. Absolutely, Nancy. And it may, in fact, have to do with where exactly the remains of Mr. Khashoggi are at the moment. We heard from the foreign minister of the last couple of days. He's essentially saying we still don't know where the body is. I mean, there are a lot of questions outstanding about what exactly happened to Mr. Khashoggi. We've seen competing narratives over the last few days in particular, certainly new details continuing to emerge. Now, the question, of course, going forward is how is this going to impact this future investment initiative, this Davos in the desert? Many, many people that I've been speaking to were quite shocked that the Saudi didn't pull back here, that they decided to go ahead with it. They even decided to go ahead with the MISC Forum. That's the Crown Prince's uh, initiative, his, uh, his project that basically has been going over the last couple of years now. That's in a month or so away. The fact that they're still advocating for themselves and really trying to remain on the world stage, not just as an investment destination, but also, of course, as a cultural one as well. Now, this is going to be very interesting how this plays out over the next couple of days. And as you mentioned, just because U.S. CEOs have been pulling back here and European CEOs have been pulling back as well, that doesn't mean that everybody is taking themselves off the table, certainly with regards to Russia. You'll remember back in 2015, there was a joint Saudi-Russian agreement to invest as much as $10 billion in the Russian economy over the next several years. To date, in February of 2018, this year, essentially we heard from the RDIF that that had basically amounted to about $2 billion in investment so far with the opportunities for more. We'll be speaking to the head of the RDIF tomorrow first on CNBC for more on that. But as I say, just because these European and American companies have decided to pull back here, at least visibly in terms of this conference, it doesn't mean that their investments are going to go away. I mean, you have to remember in SoftBank alone, Saudi Arabia's invested as much as $45 billion. They're the largest investor um, in startups globally. So they're still a major player to contend with. Yes, Hadley, and it reminds me of the message we heard from Larry Fink speaking to our U.S. colleagues last week. He was very clear that stepping out of the FII involvement doesn't mean stepping out of the country by any means. In fact, we've heard some from many corporates who have expressed similar lines here. But that's really from the corporate angle here, how they navigate around the moral concerns, because, of course, they have shareholders and customers to respond to as well. But getting back to this political framework, I mean, we talk about this big announcement coming out of Turkey tomorrow. It does make me think what this means for President Erdogan, because it wasn't so long ago that his own relationships with the U.S. were really front in mind, a concern among many. And then we had, of course, the release of the pastor to the United States. And then now Turkey finds themselves really in a position of power in this situation, do you think? Absolutely, Nancy. It's quite shocking, I think, to people who've been watching the region over the last couple of years in particular, because we heard several years ago now this uh, uh, zero enemies foreign policy coming out of Mr. Erdogan, and he proceeded then to make enemies of just about everyone in the region. Of course, that has shifted over the last couple of weeks when they've been able to, at least seemingly in the press, uh, and, and play this, see this play out in the Western media as well, some sort of moral high ground here. But you have to remember, of course, that as you know, um, in terms of the crackdown on journalists, Mr. Erdogan himself is very, very much in the thick of it when it comes to um, press freedom in Turkey as well. So a lot of different things on the table, Nancy. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.